Cancer, the big C. We all know somebody that's affected by it. It's touched every person on the planet in some way, shape, or form. How do we maximize our ability to avoid developing cancerous cells within our body? And how does the microbiome play a role in that natural protection against cancer? Just like so many other things that we are learning through recent research and science about the gut microbiome and its role in digestion, immunity, uh, brain function and brain chemistry, mood. Uh, it's in that immunity piece that we're really thinking about how we can fight cancer. And sure enough, science is finding that there is a connection between the gut microbiome and our body's ability to ward off cancerous tumor growths. So in the body, when a cancerous cell or a tumor is beginning to grow, um, the immune system recognizes those, hopefully, and sends in a component of our uh, immune system called a macrophage, or sometimes they're called phages for short. And the interesting thing about macrophages is that they need a chemical to direct them to go do their job. And if there are certain chemicals present, then they will go and attack cancerous cells and destroy them. But conversely, if other types of chemicals are present in the body, then those macrophages can be directed to actually promote the growth of the cancerous cells and to aid them. Uh, that's the scary part. So we really need to be conscious of these chemicals in our body. A recent article published in the journal The Scientist uh, last month, July 2019, cited three recent studies that were looking at some of these director chemicals. Uh, specifically in this one, it was looking at an enzyme, a protein regulating enzyme called RNF5 and its ability to control uh, a melanoma tumor growth in mice. What they did was determined that they had certain mice that had this RNF5 present and were giving them a cancer-fighting immunotherapy, but in some of the mice, they gave them an antibiotic, thus wiping out their microbiome. And the RNF5 chemical disappeared in those mice, and along with it disappeared, uh, it would seem, their ability to fight the cancerous tumor growth. Other studies studying the same chemical in um, a different setting found a direct connection between gut microbiota and this chemical. And so while this is a glimpse at only one chemical and one type of cancer cell growth, um, the mechanism is pretty clear that the microbiome, if it is in one particular state, I'll call that healthy state, uh, will create certain chemicals that aid the immune system through these macrophages to fight cancer growth in our bodies. And if we are not taking care of our gut microbiome, then it's very reasonable based on this science to assume that those chemicals are not gonna be present and that we then either can be overwhelmed by cancer growth or maybe even direct our macrophages to assist in the growth of these tumors. I don't want to go on too much about all of the studies that I've cited in this particular post that I put on the blog page of my website, but please check that post out. But all of the study citations are there and you can dive into the work if you want. The real key learning here is that what we eat matters, the health of our microbiome matters, and in particular matters in the management of cancer on a day-to-day -day basis. And so what can we do as lay people to try to do the right thing and try to give our immune system uh, a leg up in fighting cancer? Well, my recommendation would be fermented foods. Um, some of these, my recommendations are always the same. It's a diet that promotes healthy uh, bacteria growing in the microbiome. So that's a diet rich in fibers, prebiotic fibers particularly. Uh, they're not hard to find and uh, and then fermented foods which have lots of 
living bacteria, healthy bacteria in them, and you're constantly promoting uh, biodiversity in your gut. And this biodiversity, study after study after study that I read, it seems that the better the diversity of the population of bacteria in the gut, uh, the healthier patients are in all of these studies. And it's when we find patients in studies that have uh, a lack of healthy bacteria and typically uh, an overgrowth of yeasts. I'll put this point in here. I've never read a study that said uh, in 14 years of looking at studies like this, I've never read one that said, and this yeast helped. This yeast was uh, key to promoting this healthy function in the body. Um, I have yet to, to do that. It's always some kind of a bacteria. And so, you know, let's not feed yeasts. How do we do that? Reduce the amount of sugars that we're eating. Be conscious of high glycemic carbohydrates. High glycemic carbohydrates and sugars are yeast food. And if we eat mostly those things, then we will be promoting more yeast in our microbiome. If we're eating fibrous foods that are high in nutrition and prebiotics, and we're having fermented foods and supplementing with some probiotics, we're gonna be throwing a lot of biodiversity down there, but also through those raw vegetables that are part of that fibrous diet, uh, we're throwing all kinds of biodiversity down there, and, and that's really what we wanna do. So, in short, um, we can get really complicated as we dive down into each of these little bacterial strains and each of these chemicals that's produced and, and each of these uh, immune system uh, mechanic functions. But really, all we need to do is make the right choice at the grocery store and the right choice in the kitchen and the right choice at restaurants. And just make sure that we are doing things to foster a healthy microbiome. We can lay our head on our pillow at night and know that we've done the right thing that day. We'll get up and do the right thing the next day. And overall, we will be healthier. And we can hopefully avoid the big C. If you want to stay informed about the latest in gut health, please like this video and subscribe. If you have a question or a comment, please leave it below. I always try to respond. And if you feel this information could be helpful to others, please share it. Thanks for watching.